This is my father's computer and it's a piece of shit and it's unstable and it crashes and it's terrible. This video is sponsored by my long term sponsor PCBWay. If you want your circuit board designed, realized and printed you should check out PCBWay. Starting prices as low as $5 for a one or two layer design. PCBWay not only prints your PCB but also assembles your PCB. Check out the PCB assembly servers. Place your order now, links in the description. Hi my name is Victor Bart and welcome to Retro Machine and in this video we are gonna replace this shitty box with something else which is probably much better than an Acer Aspire pre-built box but I got this machine a few years ago for free and it works pretty well for a while but nowadays it crashes and it's just unstable and Yesterday I was uh, making a backup so I turned on the machine, I started Windows, uh, I uh, uh, made a network connection and after two minutes I get a scrambled screen and everything froze. Yes, this machine needs to be replaced. But first let's take a look what this machine is and then I gonna part it out for because I need to basically one part for the other machine. We have an Asia Aspire, it's an M3920. It's made for Windows 7. We have an Intel Core i7-2600, which is a pretty nice CPU. Four cores with hyper threading, but no overclocking, but in a box like this it's also not necessary. We have 6 GB of DDR3, but I upgraded it to a whopping 8 GB. There was a 1 TB hard drive inside of this machine, but there is now an SSD in. DVD sub Super Multi, AMD Radeon HD 6450. It's just onboard graphics, nothing uh, special. So it's not a gaming box, it's just an office box. And my father just watches YouTube videos, does his email, uh, browses the internet and he stores his photos on this machine. He doesn't need much, just a stable machine so I don't get any support requests to fix his machine. And we have a uh, multi-card reader in front of here, but there's more than on this list. Behind this uh, door there's the DVD uh, writer and if you push this button there's a little lever here that puts open the drive. But here's another uh, drive bay. And if we push this button and there's a hard drive logo on here. The door opens and we have a uh, hot swappable hard drive rack uh, in here. Which is toolless. So maybe I should take that unit out before I gonna probably scrap this machine. On the top we have four uh, USB 2.0s, an audio and a door here, but it doesn't have any special function. So yeah, you can probably put an external uh, hard drive here with USB cable and then close the, the lid. Something like that. This machine needs to be replaced because I think it's the motherboard, but it can also be the memory or the power supply or a combination of it. So on the rear we have the power supply, PS2, HDMI, VGA, 6 USB ports here, gigabit uh, network card and audio and there were no cards installed in this machine. The machine is cooled with something that looks like an Intel CPU uh, cooler but with a different fan and an air duct on top of it so it cools from the side. I don't think there's any fan in the front. There's a little outtake fan here in the rear, there's a USB bracket here. We have four memory banks which is pretty nice and I now filled up with two gigabyte DDR3 sticks. Because why not? And we have one PCI uh, 16 slot and three PCI uh, one time slots. So you can run a video card in it but not sure if you have any cables to power it. No, then you need to have Molexes to a 6 pin. Yeah, so this is not really a gaming machine. Let's take out the only important piece of this build. And that is what I put in. And that is my father's SSD. 
because everyone should use an SSD even your father and they are pretty cheap now ah efficiency I only put one screw into the SSD in the side <laughs> so we have a Samsung SSD I think it's an 840 EVO just say 250 uh, gigabyte and in an OZC uh, bracket so for the rest I don't gonna care for now to pull out any other parts maybe I pull out the hard drive rack but I don't think it's the highest quality the power supply is an 80 plus bronze and the unit is 300 watts I think you recognize this machine from a few videos back where I turned this into a file server to showcase how you can do that with old hardware and I think it's the perfect candidate to give to my father where I don't need to reinstall stuff because it's one generation later this is the i7-3077 it's also not the overclocking versions but 4 threads with hyper threading right now there's 32 gigabytes of memory inside I already said to my father I probably gonna buy uh, some different memory kit I think I want to uh, go for 16 gigabyte which is like 35 euros and this kit is just too good to stay in here Intel stock cooler perfectly fine a really nice Asus uh, micro ATX board the P8Z77M Pro I already owned this motherboard before I got this machine in because I bought a motherboard like this brand new in 2012 and this is 2012 hardware and the i7-2600 is 2011 hardware let's see what we need to do with this machine or let's first let take a very quick uh, overview we have a Plex Store DVD uh, writer, not sure if I gonna plug it in. We have USB 3, audio, power button, reset, some uh, front intake, there's a uh, cover missing here. So the rear connectivity is much better. We have PS2, we have uh, normal USB 2.0s, USB 3.0, eSATA, uh, we have HDMI, we have SPF out. VGA, DVI, a Realtek network card, more USB 3.0 and a full size sound card. There's now uh, one uh, network card installed which I will take out. And we have a Corsair TX850 power supply. But I think that's quite overkill because we're gonna use the onboard video. So I'm gonna replace it with a different Corsair unit and keep this uh, like in my pile for interesting builds because this has two 8 pin uh, CPU connectors so I can run dual Xeon boards from this power supply and an 850 watt power supply is much better for that and we have an outtake fan here and an outtake fan here and in the front we have one intake uh, fan and even a dust filter and for the demonstration in the video I used four one terabyte Seagate hard drives the lucky thing is it's a toolless installation so I don't have to unscrew 16 screws to get the hard drives out and let's directly install the SSD if that fits in the toolless uh, base <laughs> no it doesn't fit ah does it stay it barely fits the pins here in the side so let's see if I can install this by some maybe some more force It fits! <laughs> I heard scratching sounds. Oh, perfect! The SSD is now here so I can connect the cables. Let's remove the network card. And I put an Intel Kikabit adapter inside of it. Just because if you have a file server you don't want to have a Realtek network card. But for my father's PC, for some internet stuff, it's fine. This Corsair power supply is pretty nice, it's a TX850, all the cables are attached, which is a bonus if you get this like in a free machine, then you don't miss any cables. If you have a, a power supply with these detachable cables, which is really nice, but in an 
machine that's already built you do, probably don't get all the cables and then you're missing cables and right now you don't miss any cables so I sort out the cables and we have a 24 pin uh, connector which can be split up to 20 pin we have two 8 pin CPU connectors which also can be both split so even if we want to power on pending 4 motherboard it's possible with this uh, power supply then we have four uh, 6 plus 2 uh, power cables for video cards so we can run decent video cards even as lie with this power supply and we have 8 SATA power connectors in this system on 2 cables and 8 Molexes on 2 cables and to replace it I will use this Corsair GS500 and I used this a um, long time in my uh, self built file server in 2012 or 13 so uh, yeah, I think this is a perfect unit for this machine. So this power supply has a 24 pin cable, an 8 pin cable that can be split. Only two uh, cables for video cards, but it is both uh, 6 plus 2, so you can run a single video card. And it has uh, one floppy connector here, four Molexes, and we have uh, 6 SATA connector so a little bit less than the 850 but this is a 500 watt power supply but for machines like this it's perfectly fine and already overkill and I don't wanna bother too much about cable management and we have on this motherboard two SATA 600 ports and four SATA 300 ports so let's pull out some cables because we don't need them all so let's connect the SSD and the power to the SSD. PCBWay has shared open source projects. Go to the tab shared projects to see all the user projects that are shared. Select a category and find something you like. For example check out this project. Film camera remote shutter project with a Raspberry Pi Pico. PCBWay makes the PCB for this project and you get a component list and a video and a written description. So if you want to make this project go to the link in the description. Okay, Windows is already booting and I hope we don't have to install any drivers. But this is basic hardware and even the Intel graphics and the standard network card and standard stuff. So I think we will be fine. Apparaten voorbereiden. So it's preparing some devices. Yeah, and normally I use English Windows, but for my father I use uh, Dutch Windows. Let's see. Uh, apparaat be here. Everything is fine, only the PCI simple communication controller has something going on, but if everything works, I will not even care about that. Intel HD Graphics 4000 is installed. Uh, the i7-3077 running at 3.4 gigahertz. The Samsung 850 EVO 250 gigabyte. I was thinking 840, but it's an 850. Yeah, and he's still running Windows 8. <laughs> Maybe I should uh, upgrade this later to Windows 10, but for what he uh, does do on this machine, it's fine. So yeah, I think this is a successful uh, upgrade because it just works. Let's run Cinebench R15 to see uh, if it performs well and if it's stable. And even in this list is an i7-3077. So let's see if it has the same score or not. The score is 741 and the other score of the other i7-3077 is 662. So it's in between the 4070K and the 3077 so it performs really well. Only now comes <laughs> the part that's probably really shitty. The OpenGL uh, test. I think I'm gonna run away and see later if it runs.
<laughs> OpenGL reference matching test failure errors in rendering uh, blah 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 this video card is not good for any 3D stuff or serious uh, work oh now it c continues so uh, The Cinebench OpenGL test just failed and didn't give a score but the CPU score is pretty good and there's a lot of memory in this machine soon a little bit less and the SSD is working and everything is just working and it's silent so uh, yeah I think my uh, father will be very happy that he has a stable machine again and to be honest I just gonna put the side panels on and just don't bother putting somewhere something here and just give it to him so he can watch uh, videos uh, again tonight so if you like to support me you can support me monthly on patreon and get access to my awesome discord server or use my amazon affiliated links and thanks for watching